A very warm welcome to all of you to this seminar. And thank you so much, each and every one of you, for making your precious time available on Saturday morning. As most of us would agree, we live in the world overrun by stress. From the time we wake up in the morning till we sleep at night, we, we are faced with various challenges, be it at home or at workplace. How can we engage with the world and still be happy and stress-free? How can we understand the natural laws on how to stay happy and be empowered with the right attitude to sail into our ports of success? Today, today all of us have made appointments with ourselves to find out some answers to these questions. I'm delighted Dr. Suresh Govind is with us today to guide us in finding those answers. He will help us learn how to stay happy and focus in the right manner. Happiness from all our interactions. Dr. Suresh Dubey is a professor and a scientist for the past 25 years at the University of Malaya in Malaysia. He is winner of many national and international awards generated more than 130 scientific papers and author of books and also an advisor to many doctorate students. He volunteers his time through the Satisai organization Malaysia. He has been instrumental in many nation building programs in the country and has traveled extensively around the world to speak to youth, educators and members of the organization <coughs> on human values and selfless service. He is currently the international coordinator for community engagement in 120 countries all around the world. Please join in welcoming Dr. Suresh Uh Very good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you so much for coming. I see that the audience has got more number of ladies. It means that the ladies are more stressed <laughs> the men are few because the men are actually contributing to the stress. <laughs> so they stress them up when they come here. And they must be there waiting for you for them to stress, stress you more. So the whole idea of life is that if you have decided to live in this world, these three words don't go together generally. It's like looking for a vegetarian tiger. It doesn't happen. No, you cannot look for one. These two words don't go together. So you are very successful, you will be generally stressed out. If you are very stressed out, you won't be having happiness. Now how to get all these three things together? This is the art. The idea of living in this world is that you will go outside now, you look for hospitals, you will find your heart institutes becoming more bigger. The cancer institutes are becoming higher. In developed nations, two things have become less. One, hospitals, two, jails. The jail size is increasing like nobody's business. There's no more place for anybody to go inside now. Hospitals are becoming larger and larger. These are not indicators of success. So indicators of success means that people must become more and more healthy, more and more happy. That's what life is all about. People were happier before than now. If you look at your fathers and grandfathers and all that they were living in those, in those times, I think they were far happier. And therefore, the diseases were much lesser. Lifestyle diseases should not happen in human beings. Have you seen the Discovery Channel where the birds are flying like this in slow motion? And then suddenly, just flying like that. Slow motion, like right? Second. And the bird dies of heart attack and falls down like that. Have you ever seen a bird like that? Have you ever seen an elephant walking like this with a stroke? Have you seen a hypocholesterol life? <laughs> it doesn't happen. In the animal kingdom, they know how to do it very well. They die, they die of old age, if not they die of infectious disease. That's all. Only human beings, the two-legged, tailless, hornless animals, called man and woman, of course. They live in this world, accumulating diseases, accumulating sicknesses, accumulating... Uh, oh, but he's happy. <laughs> That is, you know, we program ourselves to be worried. Why are you worried? I don't understand my worry. 
you know, what is your problem? What is your problem? Now I have a lot of money. And then the girl is already 30 something years old, and you want to be married, and you already want to go to a Greek temple in the church in the tower, <laughs> praying around, you are rotating and rotating in every temple. There's no suitable person in the church, she doesn't want to get married. You know, you know, you know, it's just a There are some people, I don't know how they. Do you know when you ask people, how are you? I've got a headache. The, the, the description of their headache, I've got a splitting headache. You have to go and take a medical, you know? The, other, <laughs> the way they describe their headache, you have to go and take a medical. Which means to say, people are there distributing sorrows and misery. So this lady now, they are worried. You know, daughter is poor, so you are not married. You know. So finally, one day, when I met her, when this lady, you know, one day, what happened? Ah, now after so many years, after so many years of gravitating around the temples in the churches, finally they managed to get one good person. So now he's married, he's married. Then why do you look worried? Ah, worried is not that serious because three years have gone by. Poor child. <laughs> rotate again, rotate. Go round, go round, go round. Poor child, you've done everything and then you know, the big one, the big Finally, after four years or five years, one child comes. Now why are you worried? Ah, now he goes to work this way, she goes to work that way, and the child I have to look after. <laughs> you, you are the one who have asked for this problem, and now you are looking after it. Hey, no, maid also, no, and lucky you in Philippines. In other countries you cannot get, but Philippines maybe you can get a maid. Therefore, one maid comes to look at you. Now you should be happy. Ah, I'm happy, but now the child looks at the maid and calls her. <laughs> problem. Can you see your problem has shifted? You have compounded the problem, it has changed. From birth to now, you have just shifted your issues and your problem. You are always worried. I mean, is it? There was one lady, a true story, I was walking the road. She was passing like, Ah, Suresh, I'll be meet a lot of people. So, how are you? Oh, how are you, Auntie? Oh, so Then she continued to narrate her problem. Very big problem. So I said, I can end your problem now. Really? How will you end my problem? You see that big lorry coming? Yeah. So I just need to push you inside the exit door. <laughs> and then your problem is gone. <laughs> so I can dismiss your problem. The issue here is that if you have decided to swim in the ocean, learn how to swim in the ocean. Because every ocean, whether it's Manila or in the Philippines or you come to Malaysia, every ocean must have waves. So if you stop peeing. If I were to ask each one of you to come to the front and put all your problems here, let us divide equally the problem. Do you know what you will say? After listening to the huge problem, it's okay, I don't take mine back and go back. <laughs> <laughs> Compared to everybody else, yours is okay. So the question now is that how do you leave? And this is becoming a big, huge medical problem now. Lifestyle diseases, huge one, are becoming problems. It's all related to the mind. I want you to know one truth. This is from, coming from a medical faculty, medical background. Do you know your brain is connected to the gut? They call it gut brain axis. How many of you knew about this gut brain axis? Okay. How many of you didn't know? Okay, that's fine. So it makes my life better. You will know everything that is known as a city speaker. Okay. <laughs> so gut, gut brain axis here means that this is the biggest research now done. There are about 10,000 papers now connecting this. Your brain is connected to your stomach. This is why when you go for interview, you get butterflies. When you're going to visit, when you're about to get married, uh, you're not seeing the girl in the first time, you're going to the house, and all that, there's butterflies. Because nowadays, you don't have those butterflies. <laughs> butterflies all existed those days. <laughs> they all gone now. Now they know the girl better than the girl themselves. So, <laughs> so the question now is that when you are going into a very, uh, what you call it, worried situation, your, uh, the thoughts trigger the gut. Now this is a very important point. Every thought you process, every thought you process will influence your gut. And there are how many bacteria here? There are more than 3 trillion bacteria. This is considered as the second brain. The first brain is this. Second brain. This is a new subject I'm teaching. Telling you if you don't want to record it. This is what it is called second brain. So your second brain, doctors have discovered, medical scientists have discovered that this aspect of it is that you have got more DNA here than before the body. So your stomach is a very, very, very important. 
all your bacteria are here. So your bacteria talking to each other has got an influence over the thinking process that you have. The thinking processes also influence your bacteria. So what happens is that health is not only when you found out psychosomatically that the brain and the mind and the body is connected. So if you are a very moody person, you definitely will have a health problem. Sure, something. Oh, that's why now when people come further, I have a lot of pain. So we always spend some time trying to discover what are your thoughts. You always want something messed up. Okay? So you've got to straighten there in order to get your body pain. So the philosophy of life is that body is nothing more than an extension of your mind. This is a psychological view. The body is an extension of your mind. How your mind is, that is how your body is. How your body is, that is what This is too connected. This is the basis upon which this whole talk is going You have to believe this. So, you, one way is you can sit there and listen to me talking, and then at the end of the day, you go back and practice exactly how you have lived before. You will find nothing will change. We now need to change. So, in one hour, 15 20 minutes, pick up this essential point. Body is an extension of the mind. It's the first step. It is not separate, it is connected. If I want my body, whenever there is a pain, it is giving me a signal. It's a signal. Why? Why are you coughing? The lungs is telling me, go and see a doctor. The doctor, fellow doesn't want to see a doctor, so I can make sure I go to the doctor. How do I do this? Keep on irritating. When I keep on irritating, I have to go and see. So then the medication comes. So this coughs are symptom. So whenever they are symptom, this is called symptomatic. Most of the doctors in the medical field they treat symptomatically. So because you've got a lot of patients waiting, what's wrong? What's wrong with you, uh, what, uh, doctor? What is wrong with me, doctor? Depends how much is there in your pocket. <laughs> if the wallet is thicker, the diagnosis will be a lot more. Funny. So now we often have a joke in our medical fraternity. The doctors come, they tell you to oh, you will lock off this test, you have to go for this test, this test, and you go from pound to the pound and collecting everything. And then finally you show everything, every result is negative. And the doctor will look at it, then they will put, uh, they will give you a diagnose you with one problem, which you will get a doctors will get a I think you are suffering from stress. <laughs> Don't worry, you will get a double dose of it when they give you the money and they charge you the bill outside. <laughs> okay, next one. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Now, have you heard about a man who was shopping with his baby boy? The obviously distraught and screaming child sat in the shopping cart. As the man walked up and down the aisle, he calmly and patiently repeated, Don't yell, Bobby. Calm down, Bobby. Don't get excited, Bobby. Have love, Bobby. Have love, Bobby. Be calm. A woman standing next to him turned and said, You certainly are to be commended for trying to so hard to soothe little Bobby. The bewildered man looked up and said, My dear lady, I am Bobby. <laughs> this is for self assuring <laughs> Next one. Click the other. Next one. Now, just look at these words. Tell me how many F can you find? Just give me 30, 45 seconds. Just calculate silently this thing. Don't shout out the word. I will explain to you how many F are there in this. How many of you say 1 F? How many of you say 2 F? 3 F? Very good. 4F, 5F, 6F. 6F. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So there are 7 people here who said there are 6F. So you go back to the same step, step before you you'll find that actually there are 6. See, F is there, F is there. Uh, here's off. You all missed the word off. Oh, so, this, so what is very obvious standing in front of you is missed. Can you understand? This is what the whole point of life is all about. What is staring at us, which is so obvious, we cannot see. And we miss the whole life, missing out these things. See, it is now I pointed out. Ah, oh, ah, oh. Okay, now the others. Among you, which is about 100 people here, there were maybe 7 of you who said that you could see. The remaining 80%, 90% could not see. 
Okay, why is it that the seven saw and the remaining did not see? It is this is what life is all about. You will miss everything. You'll find you have a child and you will miss enjoying the child. You know why? Then, oh, what happened? Tomorrow no exam. Then, 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 do you know how difficult it is? You know how how hard I right? try to move you narrate your tragic tragic story, tragic story pushing <laughs> Because you are an Indian, you must get your child to be either be a doctor, lawyer, or engineer. You know, no, no, this is the Indian uh, <laughs> thing. So and they push, 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 push everybody, and then finally he goes to college and then he goes there. And then you live in a huge big house and the children have all gone. When you had the child, you did not enjoy. You went there, that's it. Your husband and your wife, before they became husband and wife, do you know your intimacy and your conversations are much more than now? Yeah. Yeah. Generally, your conversations with your husband before they became husband and wife is much more. Today, the wives who are here, you SMS to your husband and say, Darling, I love you. Just SMS and say, I'm telling you, give two minutes, the reply will come. What happened to the car? Where's the car? Do not take the I told you not to take the car. <laughs> so the question of the theory is that what kind of thing is that we miss life. We miss it. We cannot see, we are not enjoying, we are not there, we are not there where we are supposed to be there hundred percent. We've forgotten how to be. When you are eating food, you should be with the food. With your child, child, with your wife, wife. So if you are having a romantic, you, know, you see a movie, you must see the movie, it doesn't matter. Oh, 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 Camera zooms, zoom into the actor, this and she swallows and the two tears comes out. Shahrukh Khan is dying. And you are crying. And it's okay because you are immersed in the movie. That's what you are supposed to be. Immersed in the movie. And then you cry and cry and cry. And then your husband, no, what's happening? Shahrukh Khan is dying. I am still alive. <laughs> <laughs> so you so can lose the thing. There is a subject and the object, if it is together, that is what happiness means. Subject and object must be together at every one point. It is considered as happiness. Wherever you are. If you are cooking, you should be there 100% in your cooking and you should enjoy it. If you are exercising, you should enjoy it. The problem is we are never there anywhere 100%. When you are going or to the car, you are worried about something. You are the workplace, you are worried about the problem. You feel you. You are never anywhere, anywhere, hundred percent. And that is why you are, are, are unhappy. And happiness is about being hundred percent at that one point. That's all. But why can't you trust the mind? You think many people have the wrong notion. When you are worried, it is a reflection of responsibility. See, brother, you don't understand. I'm, I'm worried. Okay. Why are you worried? See, I'm a responsible mother. <laughs> Who told you that by being worried you should be responsible? It's a wrong notion. No, I was taught like that. I used to think, I see my mother and my mother. They always worry. And they said, why? Because we love him. So love is equated to worry. So if I worry more, have a long face, I love. <laughs> what a funny concept of life. We have imbibed all these things there. We have to deprogram a lot of things. Do you know a lot of children running up? The best people to demonstrate this is children. They run, 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 run. You know who spoils that? We call them and say, what's wrong with you? Why are you laughing now? You know you're not supposed to laugh. <laughs> so the fellows started to, the one who is enjoying so much, uh, the mothers and fathers have stopped them laughing. You must grow to become very serious. Longer than <laughs> So you lost everything. Do you know the body, when you keep on laughing and enjoying, your body produces an endorphin. It's a hormone called endorphin. Your endorphin produces, people don't understand, I'm not telling you. Morphine, you know, and it is morphine. If you take morphine, you will get a high. They say endorphins high is 50 times more ecstasy than drugs, uh, external drugs. 50 times. When you are high, this drug inside you is 50 times more effective than heroin, and it doesn't give you a residual effect. People instead of using your inner hormones to generate, you may depend on your drugs and alcohol. Can you understand? So the point is, we have to learn how to be happy and how to enjoy. So I felt this is the one. success. So don't miss out life until and you know when <laughs> when you start realizing a lot of things in the ICU. <laughs> then you look out through the window, you see all your relations outside. Nobody is supposed to come inside. 
And then occasionally your son may come to use it. And then you take out your mask to tell him something. And, or, and the son, instead of listening to the wife, Papa, don't talk. <laughs> you're not supposed to talk. And then one, two tears will come out. You know why I see? Well, it is the time when God is telling me, I want to see you. I want to see you. So it is at that moment a lot of realization will come. Not that you are missed out. Instead of seeing 6 F. I went and said, boy, I missed out so many things. I missed out. God gave me so much opportunity to enjoy in this world. Why did I worry about these things? Gee. And then when I'm dying, I, I found out, and this is very truthful, if you go to any funeral, when you die, you go alone, do you know that? Nobody comes with you. I've checked. Even the husband is dying, the wife will be there crying. I've seen wives dying and husband crying. Oh, crying. So one day, <laughs> the two hands will come and I was, you I mean, you must say, I used to think. If he's so attached, you should follow. Why didn't you follow? You should have gone with him. You can't. You do, especially in the rules, you are not supposed to be there because the fire is very hot. So you go near him. So the husband stays back. <laughs> I go alone. My friend, you are here. You will live alone. This is the truth. Hitler went to a palmist and showed his hand. Palmist looked at him and said, You will die on the Jews public holiday. So he said, when is the juice public holiday? Any day you die, will be the juice public holiday. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 one of these days is going to happen to us. So, learn to live in this world happily. Now, I want to ask you, I know many of you did not bring paper and pencil, but you can use your finger. All right? So, what I, I'm going to ask this question, answer is yes or no. If yes means you just go number one, yes. Then you go to the second question. You go to the second question. When you see the second question, if it's yes, you just increase your fingers by counting the number of yes. You understand what I'm trying to say? The first question. There's rarely enough time in the day to do all the things that I have to do. The answer is yes, say yes. So we see the day, 24 hours is there, not enough time. So is it true? Then you say yes. Second part, second question. It's irritating for me to sit in the traffic. No, <laughs> Okay, third one. Third question. I sometimes finish other people's sentences for them in mid conversation. Look at some people. There are some people like that. When you're talking to them, suddenly you cut. You insert and you start your conversation. There are some people who cannot have the patience to wait for the whole sentence to be. Are you something like that? Then you say yes. Number four. I prefer reading short stories, newspaper, and novel. Novel is very thick. Short, you feel short, short things is better. So if you answer yes, you say yes. I, my job requires me to punch a clock or record my hours. I will like that. You need to punch clock, you need to record. I will working like that. Six, I can't seem to exercise on a regular basis. So six is yes, you say yes. Seven, I spend more time and attention on my career than on my family. Some people work from morning to night, really busy. So are you like that top of the sense? Eight, I often feel that I have too many things to do. Is it yes? Two things are too many things. Nine, I often begin a new project without finishing the last one. There are some people who start here, start here. Are you like that? So then you call me to think. Number ten, I don't always take the full allotment of vacation time. So 30 days is given to you. You don't take the full allotment. It's okay, of course, both. Eleven. I sometimes have trouble concentrating on one thing at a time. You are like that. Just one concentrating on it. Twelve. Life is rushing too fast at pace. Everything is rushing so fast. There are some people you know. Are you feeling like that? Thirteen. Passengers in my car always ask me to slow down. <laughs> so you are you like that? Yeah, you feel like that. Fourteen. I often have trouble getting to sleep. There are some people like that. Have trouble getting to sleep. Are you like that? 15 at night, when you sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> 17, I often feel competitive in others. Yeah. 18, I periodically lose my temper. 19, people sometimes call me a cynic. You know, a cynic means sarcastic, you know, very cynic. Are you right? Are you a person? Okay, 20, coffee is good for me to keep me awake. Coffee, let me always take coffee. 21, People sometimes call me workaholic. 22. I don't like to finish a job until it's just right. You must finish it and finish it just right. Are you like that type of person? 23. 
I have been called a micromanager controlling others. I like to control other people. 24, I have a nervous twitch like biting. You know, some people like that, they bite here, some people like that. You, have to, you know, something. 25, oh, biting my nails. 25, I have many deadlines that I miss. I have many deadlines that I miss. Are you like that? Or 26, I have very few hobbies. Very few. Some people don't have any hobbies at all. You know, some people. Are you like that? 27, I eat out a lot. I eat out a lot. Are you like that? 28, I often work on weekends. 29, I am always with my handphone. 30, okay, I often use tobacco, alcohol, or other intoxicants. So you count okay, how, out of 30, how many guests you have? So you should get the answer. You should get less than five. <laughs> so if your answer is less than five, you're not having stress. If you're having more than 16, yes, then you need to worry. If you're having 5 to 16, that means you're already stressed. Okay. So literally, in other words now, how many of you here have less than 5? Less than 5. 5 or less? Yeah, 5 or less. How many of you more than 5? So, okay. so majority of you then are experiencing, uh, should be having an experience of some form of stress. So this is a very important indicator, you know, these are what we call stress indicators to show that something is not balanced. Uh, so uh, I think 80 or 90% of your crowd here is already experiencing stress. So if you are already bordering into this, you should be having some neck pain here, some pain here, some back pain here, and all this. all are very simple. That's why when you go for the massage, it will, they are very good in showing you. When you go for massage, uh, they will press the muscles. And then tell you, oh, why you have got so much of stress? They will, tell you. they will know that you have stress. So how do they know that? Because your muscles are storing the energy. Why is muscle storing energy? Because by its time, you said that E is equal to MC square. Energy can be converted to matter. So the energy which is your thoughts are converted to matter and stored inside the muscles. It becomes stiff. The stiffer the muscles, harder the stress becomes. I mean, it becomes very stressed up when you go to a normal doctor, they will give you the symptomatic medicine, muscle relaxant, and all that. But the real cause is that it's being triggered by this. Which is what the point of medicine now is. Medicine is changing its format now. It's becoming what they call precision medicine, or what they call uh, personalized medicine. It's no more general medicine now. It's becoming different. Why? Because they found out every individual is different, your host responses are different. Medication may work for you, but the same medication may not work for you because our, each individual is different. So it is becoming personalized, it is becoming, uh, it is another word that they use also, it's called predictive medicine also. Predictive. And also now called another term that they use is functional medicine. They sit with each individual for hours. This is a new approach that medicine is now revolutionizing. Most of the time you go to a clinic, you say, what's that, okay, what, 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 okay, what, take the camera, the next, next, so then he's, he's just churning out medicines, treating people symptomatically and you go. And then you become dependent on the medications. Once you become medication dependent, then you are not rewarding, you are not resolving to issues that moves away from medication. How do you do that? You have to change your lifestyle. Change the lifestyle is changing the attitude. Let me tell you, ask you something. Give me some definition because a lot of people here have got definition of success. Can you just tell me what's the meaning of the word uh, 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 successful life? What do you mean by successful? I'm sure you must have some imaginary of what is success like. He is very really successful man. Let me what do you mean by him to be? Rich. Rich, yeah. Rich. Happiness, yes. Happy. Patient. Yeah. Healthy, yes. Healthy, healthy. Work-life balance? Balance life. Huh? Work-life balance. Work-life balance. Work-life balance. Work balance. Yeah. balance. Social. Social work. Social relations. Social relations. Yeah, what about you? Friends, circle. Okay, you have a large social circle. Yeah. Influential. Okay, large social circle. <laughs> Influential. Some of Don't forget, all of us are going towards successful life, you know. You have some idea what you're going towards. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you, you have a big car, you have a big house. 
So luxury, luxurious life. Status. Optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Content, yeah. Contentment. A successful person is a contentment person. Contented. Okay. Yeah, family must be happy. You must be happy with your family now. <laughs> okay, ten more. Give me ten more words. Not competitive. A successful person is not competitive. Okay. How you then you can become a business? Okay, not competitive, alright. Professional achiever. Yeah, professional achiever. Achiever, yes, a professional achiever. Yeah, very good professional. Okay. Any more? Educated, yeah, you should be educated. Okay. Yeah, you should be disciplined. Talented. You should be what? Talented. Talented, you should be talented. Relax. Stress free. It should be stress free. I'm only going to catch it, but so many friends of the Facebook is considered success. Okay, the number of people. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, very good. Popularity. Okay. Does it come under influence? Or oh, the circle, happy circle? Take it, I think it's here. What is it? I mean, I'm only here. One, two, three, four, five, six, four more. Take life decision. Take what? Life decision. Take life decision. 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 Alright, yeah, yeah, very important. You have to make the right decision. Right decision. Three more. Three more. Vision, yeah. You should be visionary. You must have vision. Visionary. Two more. Two more. Accept. Accept what you get. I don't know about taking decisions, but accept what you get. Okay, acceptance. Eh? You need to just think. Whatever you get, accept. Alright, I put the here 20 words. Now let's see. There are two things that you need. Which you can categorize the whole thing. One is that a successful person, you must have it comes into two parts. One is called if you don't have a skill, you will not be successful. You have to have the right skill. Okay, so that's important. But more importantly than that, you should be having the right attitude. These two things. So let's just check. Rich, do you think is an attitude or a uh, skill? Skill. 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 skill? Skill. Okay. Happy, patient, healthy living, attitude, okay. work-life balance, uh, influential, okay, what is this? Okay, okay. so what's the attitude or skill? Okay. Luxury, a big house, big car. Contented, happy family, ambition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Non competitive. Attitude. Is a professional achiever? Skill. Educated. Discipline. Talented. Stress free. Right decision and visionary acceptance, courageous. Okay, so let's count the number of skill. One skill is here, two, three, four, five. Okay, anything else? Ah, six, six. Okay, so seven. Okay? So seven out of twenty times hundred percent. Cancel, cancel five, thirty-five percent. So you get about 35% skill, 65% attitude. I, you, you, when I started this essay, I put 20, you can see the word that I put 20, it's always like that. This follows what is called Pareto's principle. Now Pareto's principle states, everything in life is 20%, 80%. So you see, you've got your 35% skill, this is close to 20%, and 65% to attitude. So literally, what it means is that, in order for you to be successful in life, most people do not focus on developing right attitude. 100% of your time in colleges, in schools, and universities, spend time in developing your skill. That is why people are becoming stressed. Because by the definition of your success, which is even for you, you have defined success. 
to be these things. And success means you need to have the right attitude. When you have this right attitude, you will know how to have happy life. You know, you'll know how to be stress free. Can you understand? You spend all your time in developing your skill. Oh, you go to teaching, you go to teaching, you must be 100%, you must be, you know, you know. So it's just because your children are just programmed to become skillfully masterful. But we forgot about the most important thing, which is the attitude, which contributes to 80% of the success. That is why people today are living stressed. People are not happy. We all programming them to become unhappy. You must be like that. You know? I don't care. You have better get seven years because my sister's daughter got eight days. You understand? I don't come into this house without the nine days in the middle of the Because I want to telephone them and tell them that I've got nine days. This is your thing. So the first study, study, study is stressful. <laughs> Whether he becomes a doctor, lawyer, it doesn't matter. He must meet the sisters. <laughs> so, so this is what the whole point here is that you need to become uh, what you call most 80% of the people are stressed because you need to look back at your attitude. So today is a day when you need really need to put one more criteria into your into your living thing attitude. So uh, why are you angry? Why I you know I, I don't know why I always get angry. You know Monday morning you know I get the Monday blues. So I get angry. I get I get a little irritated. You know I, I, I don't know why I get irritated. It just means that you're, you're, you do not know how to manage your emotions. Most of period. That's it. I get a bit of cranky. It's a cranky, you're mad, that's all. <laughs> you have nice softer words to describe it, but that's, that's where you are. So, and by the way, every time you become angry, your body produces a toxin that takes three months to get detoxified. Every time you get angry, your get, body gets uh, to release a toxin that takes three months to detoxify. In one year, you are allowed to become angry four times. <laughs> In one year. So you open your diary, you can say, April 27, 16 June, 19 with July, and 21st December or something, you put four days. That's the day you are planning to become angry. <laughs> put it in your diary and then you go, you shout at everybody, no problem, because you've got three months to detoxify. Yeah. So once you become, like now, when you go back traffic jam, the traffic cuts into you, your body produces toxin, it gets three months to come out. So in one day, amount of toxin is going into your system, into your body, it is narrowing your vessels. Because toxin go, you find that the blood formation will start to take place in the wall, will pop and then and then when you go into hospital, e -R -E, the doctor will come up and tell you, I'm very sorry to tell you that he has to go for a bypass. Doctor, if that fits, that fits, he passed by. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and, and why is it that it becomes that? Because the world is creating the stress. You continue to receive the stress. That's it. Unnecessary. You know, in the hospital, there are a lot of people who come and give you get well cards. Yeah. Why do you think they are giving you the get well cards? Simple. They want you to come back so that they can continue to give stress. <laughs> please, no, please come back. Because no one wants to get angry. Come home. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole the people who send you there are the people who give you the get the cards so and the cards. It's because of you, it's only because of you. <laughs> and there are a lot of people this one people who do this very crucial, right? So they, all these are good philosophies today, but what they have done to me, I never forget. Maybe he said one more, he said time will be. I said, Uncle, you're already 82 years old, how much time will be? <laughs> Only is only stepping into the graveyard. And you are dying. What are you talking? Okay, so next one. <laughs> okay. So this is the look at this. These are the countries. Uh, there is the new map now that has come about, showing you the stress countries. Countries that are stressed. Okay, America. Look at the blue ones are the not so stressed. So you find some countries on the northern side, like Canada. Okay. Stress levels are rising worldwide. Stress research studies show that more than 1,000 corporation people working in corporate survey found 6 in 10 workers significant global economies experience increased workplace stress. So you go and ask your employees and are you stressed out? Okay. So it's already there. 70% of your time you are work, uh, working in an office and if you are not happy getting up and going to work, then something is wrong. How many of you 
early morning, every morning you get up and say, walk me, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so the last day itself is an indication that you're not happy getting up. <laughs> See, I have to, I have to go to the beach, I have to go. I don't know, go to the, I don't really, you have to go, come on, you have to go. No, I, I don't, I don't have to leave. You have to go. This is school. every day. This is school. Every day, if you don't go to school, how will you learn? Come on, Ali, go. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Finally, he said, come on, you. Finally, you need to go. After all, you are the principal of the school. You have to go. <laughs> okay. So now, this is the stress term. Do not. There are a lot of people who don't have stress at all. That's not good. There are a lot of people eh, who don't have stress at all. They just completely they get up, they don't know why they're getting up. <laughs> people have to remind them, you know you're getting up. They just live in the world of it. Too little stress is also normal. So put stress, that you come to a point, the highest point is what is called joy of stress. Example. That is assuming now I take uh, no I'm coming this weekend. So I'm staying now in my sister's house. Uh, you know, family looked after. We are living in Bhutan, so okay, it's nice. Once, once in a while. Now I come next week. Next week. Suddenly, every weekend I come. <laughs> so joy and stress will now go back to too much stress. Now, why is it coming every weekend? Why is it every weekend? Even in my time, so you come to a point where you get a critical point. After that, it becomes normal. See. So it is good to have someone coming to your house for dinner. It's nice. You prepare, prepare. Ah, oh, no, no. if that's once in a way, it's good. Every day. So there is a point. This good stress is called you stress. This word for it, English word for this is called you stress. You stress means e u s t r s. It means good stress, positive stress. And people must have positive stress. That's how you make things work. But when it becomes more than that, it becomes Decline of stress. That's when you really need more stress. Can you understand? So, life you must have stress is positive stress. Like for us to organize this event is uh, a positive stress. You didn't want to organize that, you might you to New York to come, and then you now have to arrange everything else. This is a lot of people have gone through something to sit here. It's positive stress. Supposing I, we were to organize this every day. Oh, you know, it's not <laughs> so, slowly you start, <laughs> your mind will become imaginative and turn out all excuses. And you <laughs> so, this is where you need to reach here. More than that, this is from this point is where your health problems will start. The heart palpitation. You know why these things happen? It's because this is in the native place. Biologically, how this happens is that when you're going in the forest, suddenly you see a tiger coming. So, when the tiger comes, your body now must produce adrenaline. Blood must rush through. So, you now you need to now. You cannot think, tiger, tiger, whether this tiger will eat me or not. So you cannot analyze those things. The analysis part of it only comes from you. So when something comes up instinct, you see, immediately you start running. So what gives you the ability to run is this stress. So that you can have the ability to fly away or uh, free yourself from that situation. So that's why biologically. Now, let's say you have a snake in your house, you find the snake. One day it came to your house. You know, I just want to let you know, dear brothers and sisters, I accidentally passed your house and I released the cobra in your house. But do not worry about it. it will, that's what it is. See, now, for example, I have when my, uh, my PhD student was doing cancer, colorectal cancer. I went down, asked him to go down and do a survey. Asked how many people are stressed out. So we had a few persons. He went there. After two weeks, he came back and said to me, Bro, actually, to be honest, nobody is stressed out. What do you mean? None of them. How many people did he check? He checked about 50, 60 people, and all of them said they were not stressed. And then I give you a question. So I looked at the question. The question was, he went and asked, Are you stressed? <laughs> hey, you went and asked, Are you stressed? Obviously, people will say no. Because that's it. You are, are you stressed? No, I am not. No. Then, sure, you are mostly, most of you will say no. But how do you check this? Is that, do you sleep well in the night? Are you, do you some, did someone close to you pass away? Are you always thinking about something? Are you anxious about the retirement? Plan? So you put about 10 15 questions like that. We found out 78% people, 80% people were found to be stressed. It's always related, otherwise, these illnesses do not manifest. Can you see? So we are now linked up to this in a very big way. We've done uh, studies now, published a lot of papers linking this kind of aspects of it. <laughs> so it all means what? 
your emotional thing when you're sitting down and you're thinking, I know, I know. And this normally happens if your husband takes you uh, to a food a restaurant in the night, uh, to, especially to a Chinese food, and then right in the middle of eating the me, and you're taking the me food inside, and then right in the middle, he tells you, I, oh, I forgot to tell you, and this weekend I'm bringing my mother to stay in this <laughs> <laughs> so when the week comes from halfway, then you know, why did why, 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 why can't you go and stay in other people's house? You've got three other brothers and four other sisters, why don't you mind? Like, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, it's all stress, 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 oh, stress. You cannot change your mother in law because for that you have to change your husband. That is not possible. So, you know, so you have to tolerate this whole nonsense because you are married to this one. So therefore, now this whole equation, you are thinking, thinking, you see, the fact that you are already thinking, your biochemical, physiological processes in your body do not know what you are thinking about. As long as you are thinking about the stress, the body is triggered. Your physiology is changed, biological change, biochemical change, everything is changed. Just you think about a problem, your system is activated. Treat, mind you, it's not millions, it's trillions of activities going on, going on. Think, 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 continuously think, day and night, day and night. The body is changed. Your body health deteriorates because the way you think of your stress problem. And because you're only thinking of this mother-in-law system all the time, it's a perennial problem. So when you're thinking of it, you know what? You start living with that thought. When you start habituating in the thought, when I come to you, do you have any stress? You say no. So I have to sit down and dig, 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 dig. Ah, yeah, my mother-in-law. Then some you start crying. <laughs> so then you know it becomes a situation. So that is what it relates to, and it destroys your health. Many of the health issues are related to emotional issues. So this is the thing. It's a very powerful graph here. Next up. Can you see? Yeah. This is called Killian photography. So in Killian photography, when you take a picture, here a couple of centimeters from here is where your aura is. The camera captures. This is science, and it's not uh, focus focus or something like that. Because our faculty wanted to buy this machine from Russia. From this aura, we can determine what disease you have. Yeah. Now this person here is a very meditative Person. Very calm person, so your aura is blue. This person is very angry, upset. <laughs> Supposing in life you, this person marries this person. So if this is very strong, you can change this. Have you noticed some people, you know, after marriage you have changed, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it just means that so happens that this aura influences that aura, that's all. <laughs> so, <laughs> so well, before marriage you used to be very calm and after marriage you became very angry. What happened? My wife's aura is rubbing me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the auric energy is the energy field where electromagnetic, even everyone has this, including people living in Manila. Those who are, are the people coming down here, the electrical impulses go through the back of the uh, board, uh, back of the nervous system is an electrical impulse. For particular, to the uh, uh, electrical field is a magnetic field. This is called electromagnetic field using Fleming's lemon rule. So you get an electromagnetic field. Captured by the Korean photography, you get the aura. So, so if you're outside you're smiling, 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 inside you take up all right. <laughs> then you know inside you're all tensed up. Outside, that's why in English there's a word, show me your true color. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this is a creative person will have this aura. Very creative. <laughs> Can you see? So in a day, your aura can change a bit. In a day. But most of the time, if you do all your thing, you must keep the like yeah. So what happens is that when you keep on thinking something negative all the time, you do what is called aura puncturing. Aura puncturing means you puncture these holes. When you puncture these holes, that is the start of the disease. So you need to make sure the aura is always very cleansed. So that means to say you should keep retain your purity of the thought. How you retain the beauty of thought? You start looking at things like serial. You know, there's a lot of English serial and now Hindi serial. I don't know. If you Do you get channels from India? Yeah. Oh, those of you who get channels from India, the exercise that I think you will only be doing is this exercise. This is changing the uh, channels. When you go for massage, you have to massage this. Coming to get tired here. So, yeah. so when you keep on changing, what serial? And my friend, no serial is ever shown you anything. Yeah. It's either this husband is divorcing his thing, and another husband is separate here, separate here, kill here, murder there, and then you are looking into it, and crossing it, and crossing it, crossing it, crossing But you come for prayer halls, you come for you know, all the people everywhere, they have been, and then go and watch all these things. <laughs> <laughs> I see, 
prayer class. You know, coming to prayer halls, you go to the church, you go to the mosque, you go, you go to the prayer hall, we are all agree not to be happy. Everybody will be so. And then you're watching all the nonsensical things that is impacting your mind, which is injuring your aura. And that is the cause of the disease, the start of the disease. And when, especially when you like, you like it, you long, it, long for it, that means it demonstrates that you are gravitating. It's all very basic as a So, if you want to be stress free, keep your mind clean. You're not interested in lie. People come to me, hey, did you know? Hey, did you see when I stayed? Ah, yeah, when I was coming back from work, I was going in the car park. I saw her coming this way. I saw him coming this way. <laughs> With my hope and eyes, I saw. <laughs> okay, now you listen to all the gossip in the world and you're uh, contaminating yourself. Contaminating yourself. The system is very contaminated. So if someone tells you, hey, did you hear anything? No, I don't hear anything. Okay. Now, let's say after this talk is over and you go back. Very seldom people are, hey, what was the talk about? Tell me, please tell me. What did you say? What did you say? Do you think anything, anything good nobody wants to know? Can you understand? Anything negative everybody wants to know. That's the way of the world. And then we are continuously providing that. You are getting into the negative circuit of things. This is the first ill health of stress that you should provide. So this aura is a very important thing to preserve and make sure that your aura feels are very good. So very important. And, and tree. Most important thing is your house where you have plants, you have trees or you go to garden. You, uh, this is very good. If you go to trees, you plant the tree, you can find that your uh, trees have got good positive energy. If you're very stressed up, you can go there. There are some people, have you seen go to some people, oh, such a beautiful rose. Can you give me one? Uh, and then you pluck the rose, and then you cut the rose, and you go and plant in your house, and then rose fades. And you say, no, this is because my ground is not good, the sunlight is not good. Actually, nothing to do with all those. It is depends on who's planting it. That's all. There are some people no need to plant anything. You just pass by the plant, you'll fail. <laughs> you know, because the orange, the orange fields are so bad, it's all stressed up. You just pass by. <laughs> Some babies are very good. The babies who are just born, in couple, for the first few months, the conscious mind of the baby is very low. So the subconscious mind is very high. That's why the babies sometimes don't go to some people. They cry. See, uncle, see, uncle. Because you can see this color of the Some babies, you notice, you put on the cradle, you put your head above. The baby will look this side. It don't doesn't look at your face. It looks this side or looks that side. And then it will be just laughing away. You know, what, what is it? It's actually seeing the dance of the colors. The baby can see that because subconscious mind can see. So this is what we, we use it as we grow older, we lose it. In fact, as we grow older, we lose many things. <laughs> so this is what the colors is, colors are. Okay. Okay, so now what does it do? Stress is suppressing immune system. So your immune system, that's why you notice your children will be playing six weeks, seven weeks holidays and then tomorrow for school and we notice suddenly got cold. Why? You are playing yesterday. Why do they do that? Because the immune system is suppressed. How did it suppress? You suddenly thought of your boring teacher, your boring school. If you went in, the thought went inside, remember I told you? And then your entire immune system suppressed, virus gets into your system. <laughs> so suppress the immune system. When you worry a lot, it suppresses. When you worry, you become. So whenever a person gets takes medical leave for many days, even in our office, we, we are very often very sick. Then we sit down. I sit down with them. What's happening in your life? Why is it? No, I'm saying, no, no, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Well, when you find out some stress is there in the family, that causes the immune system to be down. And they say. So I, if I want to help it, I have to address that issue. The normal people will just be MC involved, but I want to know what. So they, most of the time, they will open up. Say something about the family rather than the sort of and family law, I feel better. Okay, what is the uh, what is the point of having 287 chemicals? What happens to the child? The child will become predisposed to diseases in the future. 287 chemicals, what else? On side, I think it's a great insult to intelligence. So we need to know how to educate, how to eat the right food. And if you go for a nutrient check now, you take the blood and ask to do a nutrient, you see your nutrient profile. You find that there are a lot of things that is there. Magnesium uh, will not be there. Chromium will not be there. Many people don't emphasize these things. Magnesium, chromium, uh, and many other you know, selenium. 
see, uh, they don't give importance to this uh, minerals because they think they will come from the vegetables, which is broccoli and spinach and all these things. And many people don't eat those things also, you know, all the wheat and whatever. I the people have this have this belief. Anything that moves, I eat. That, that's the unfortunate that people have. Another group of people, anything that grows, I eat. But in both cases, if they are contaminated environmentally, we can get these things done. And it's becoming a big problem now. So, probably, recurrent headache, weight ache, dizziness, muscle tension, dry mouth, excessive breath, all these things are passing in front of Long term, huh, promotes the aging. So, when you keep on thinking, let's say people who work until 16, when you retire, suddenly you look very aged. Can you see? So when you after the time when we are, how uncle, how are you? What are you doing? Ah, I'm waiting for him to call. <laughs> what a pathetic, what a pathetic. You're waiting for him to call. Then what is your purpose? Your purpose of life is just to work in his office for 60 years and you come out. So the whole idea is that you misplace the whole priority. Waiting for him to call. Then I said, how are you? Ah, I'm okay. Have you heard English word? So so. <laughs> <laughs> this whole life bubbling inside you, you know, we are concluding. How is it? So, so. There are some people, how, is, how are you? English word. Pulling along. Have you heard? There's a wire that comes out in the sky there and puts it. Oh, it's pulling. pulling along. So, you're just managing, you know, pulling. So pathetic. There are some people, I ask, how are you? He said, up and down. <laughs> I, I, I asked him. Are you working in the lift? Pathetic, <laughs> <laughs> pathetic answers. So no life, no enthusiasm, no nothing. We just go on like this, what a life. What the fact that you are getting up. Why you got up? Hey, my alarm clock. What we, okay, you put alarm clock next to a water, dead body and see whether it wake up. It is not the alarm clock that wakes you up. No, it, unless the spirit is inside you, you won't wake up. So what is the respect that they're giving to the spirit? This is the question. So the point here is that I have a handphone, right? <coughs> handphone is Samsung, you will have an iPhone. How is your handphone very good? What is your Samsung? So this is my body. The handphone is my body. My applications and my contact is my mind. That's just my contact is not with my voice. So my body and my mind can only operate with my battery. But do I always, anytime, talk to you about my battery? What battery do you use? I never ask this, I don't never come to you. Know this? <laughs> what battery do you use? The battery. <laughs> you talk about the handphone. Battery is a, but because of the battery, only the handphone exists. It is this concept that we are talking about. We don't give respect or uh, any special reverence to the spirit that is in us. That is what these stressing means. When you're getting back to nature, you're getting connected back to the spirit. Getting connected back to your mind. You're, we are living too much with the mind. When you operate with the mind, you become fatty and tired. When you meet the spirit, you find that you're connected. That's why somebody comes and says, Darling, you come home, let's go for a while. Okay. What time? You know, what's you know this Manila traffic, two hours have reached home. You want me to come out again for a market? Please, please, I can't, I can't do it. So he's exhausted. He puts his two legs on the top of the bench. He says, I don't know how my office is ever going to manage without me. You give me tea and she brings the tea and coffee. And, and then somebody friend and phones you, hey, where are you at home? Come, let's go for tennis. Where are you? The club. Okay, I'll come out. And you go, you pass your wife, you change your shots, take your tennis racket, passing your wife. And she's looking at you. I thought you said that you are tired and so yeah, I'm tired. That's why I need this game. I need to be very exhausted. I'm tired. So now you go and play the tennis game. When you're playing the tennis game, your whole t-shirt is sticking to your body, full of sweat, and when the kilojoule energy expenditure is so high, you're so exhausted, and you return back and you tell your wife, I feel so refreshed. Energy exhaustion, you're exhausted. Why do you feel so refreshed? Because at that time when I was playing, I did not think about the wife, I did not think about the work, I did not think only thought about how the ball should be hit and it should go the most and then. Which means to say, when I put 100% at my thought at any one point of time, this is what is called relaxation. In, in simple words, this is actually what is called yoga. 
Jadi yoga is hundred percent mystic. That's what we are doing. The other one, the physical yoga is all that is physical we can do. But when you finish that yoga, every whole day you should be in this mode. When you are driving, you enjoy the driving. You know, you enjoy the driving. So full of your enjoyment is full. When you're with your wife, when you're eating the food, when you're eating there, and then you're thinking about the uh, what how our house is, and your wife, I think food is not good. Hey, food is good, very good, very very good. But chicken curry is so nice. I think it's not chicken curry, it's mutton curry. You know what I'm saying? You thought this? Okay. So promotes aging, weight gain, osteoporosis, high blood pressure, heart disease. All these problems. Can you see all these problems? Are repercussions of them. So what we do is we go to the doctor and settle these things. And uh, we settle this. But there's a cost to that. And the cost of that is we are not settling this. That's what we do. So your job in life is to find happiness. Be happy. You will find anything to do. You're not in that. So be happy, take out the expectation. From, from now on, you live the world to live the world way to live is live unconditionally. What condition is that? Just leave one condition. Traffic jam, enjoy the traffic jam. Who asked you to be? Then stuff about it. Because of a Manila traffic jam, for two hours it is stuck. Don't get irritated and all that. You can get from the life. You know, how many of you read one book a month? Okay. Now, with traffic jam, that problem is solved. You can buy the audio books. Audio books, you put inside the book. That's what you put inside the book. By the time you leave your destination and reach there, once two few chapters are over, you finish your audio book, you pass it to somebody else, somebody else borrow that. Do you know because of your traffic jam, your Manila people can become very, very informed and enlightened people? Because you are reading. So you use adversity into an opportunity. Rather than sit there and you know, go on and call everybody, you oh, Manila, where are you? I'm stuck here, where are you? I'm also stuck here. You know, one of these days I want to migrate as a woman. We call it back, call it back, police, police coming, call it back, call it back. Because you're very, you're not supposed to, not supposed to. Okay, so next, next one. Okay, anxiety. These are all other emotional things. Anxiety. Anxiety, yeah. what is going to happen tomorrow? What is going to happen tomorrow? Whether you are going to live, when you live today only, you can have tomorrow. How do you know you're going to live today? Today, I've come today, I'm speaking to you. Why, how do I know this talk would be fun? Oh. Finish with, then you have to spank me and send me. Do you know what day I went to the Kuala Lumpur? I went to the place where they sell coffee and I asked them, uh, Do you have a coffee for 63 inch? I said, No, only people don't. For who is this? Not just for me, just in case I you have that. So they say, <laughs> The person said, 63 you have to make. Then I calculated, I realized if I die, they have to keep my body for two days to make this. So at least two days they have to keep. Whether they like it or not, they have to keep. <laughs> so the point of the story is that, I don't know maybe here or money life can live it. But what the point is, it can happen, anybody can, anywhere it can happen. So you live, today you live, tomorrow if you get a day, it's a bonus. Bonus. You yeah, apply 15 years from now, if I know you, you know, well, you know. <laughs> that means you lost the ability to live spontaneously and be happy. Just be happy, that's all. Tomorrow it will settle by itself, why are you worry? So the point is to enjoy every moment. I think that is a great joy. Decide today, enjoy. This is my I am here to enjoy, I will enjoy. I will care. Eat an ice cream, I will. like the babies, children. You know they eat ice cream, how they eat, eat ice cream, the ice cream one will trick here, trick here, floor here, there, there. But they don't care. But that is really spontaneous joy. Who spoils it? Mother. No carpet, no, no carpet, the car, the father will say the car, the father the mother will say the baby will get very fed up. I'll take this ice cream, give it to me when I'm 12 years old. So, <laughs> <laughs> because we, we don't know how to enjoy and we don't allow other people to enjoy. How many of you go for roller coaster like this? Do you like roller coasters? Yeah. How many of you don't like roller coasters? It's not the one that goes on. Oh, okay, fine. So, those who don't like roller coaster rides and those who are not comfortable with that, you have to check back again and see why you don't like. So, many of the times you don't like because your life needs to be very certain. People don't like to go in this right because you need to have a very certain area. That itself is some problem. You have to go purposely see. If you have a marital problem with your spouse, you're not talking to him, you are on the verge of some issues and all that, best thing to go is to go for a role this If he hasn't held your hands, that time he will never <laughs> You find that 
And they tried to hang up the roll up the stand. Both of you will come together. <laughs> yeah. And you, the real reason why that happens is when it goes up and down and turn and twirl, your body is uh, releasing high amounts of endorphin. That's why the children love to go and go, keep on going up. But when we become, when we get older, we want, we are doing it out of fear. Yeah, well, what happens? And you want everything. Okay, at this juncture, we need to go down. You need to, you, have, you need to have a full map of the place. I will go down 37 degrees, point five. Oh, I see. And then if you turn, oh, okay. You want everything to be predictable. Hey, if you want everything to be predictable, you should not be in the right. There are some, Amma, I want to go for all of this, Amma, please, Amma. Where is this going to go? It won't go anywhere. Then it will come back here. If it is going to come back here, then why go? <laughs> <laughs> so the point is it is it is not the destination, it is the journey. See, it is not the destination, it is the journey. If you have decided that, then why not make the journey better? So so anxiety, fear. There are people who live with all kinds of fear. You have to face the fear. If you don't face the fear, then there's it. There are some people who can face darkness. You know when you sleep, you must have a light. There are some people you need a light in the room to see. Why you stop? Why you need the light to sleep? But when you sleep, can you see the light? No, when I sleep, I don't need the light. Then if you sleep, you don't need the light, then why you need the light to sleep? <laughs> so, because they say, why you just sleep? What's your problem? They sleep and sleep. There are some people who cannot sleep. When I went to America, I just collapsed. Then people came, did you sleep well? I said, yeah, I had a good sleep. How? <laughs> you can ask me this question. I was so stuck. How? What do you mean? How? No, how can you sleep like that? Because there was a bed and a thing I slept. <laughs> that was supposed to be the objective of the bed to sleep. I know, but without any sleeping pills, without anything, how did you manage? The people cannot. You know, they'll toss and turn, toss and turn, this is there, and then worry, worry. Do you know why you're tossing and turning? Not because you cannot sleep, because you've got ego. This is it. If you cannot sleep well, it means you've got ego. Your ego is projecting a mind. The mind comes from the ego. So the ego is telling you are not even aware tomorrow morning whether you will die or not. Then what's your problem? Supposing you die today, how? Then why are you thinking about tomorrow? Then the objective of the sleep is to sleep. Brilliant! I always tell you when you sleep, even a tsunami comes, you should not wake up. That's a good sleep. Daytime also we disturb everybody, night time you know, <laughs> where are you sleep, disturb everybody. <laughs> the lion will chase, the tiger will chase, everything will chase. <laughs> and you wake up and <laughs> what's the matter? You know, I dream. What did you think? I dream the tiger was chasing me. Why did the tiger chase you in the dream? No, I don't know what. I mean I'm not sure why is this. I cannot dream much the tiger always chasing me. Tiger is chasing you because of this one anxiety. And so the anxiety mocks into a tiger and is chasing you. Anxiety doesn't come in your dream as A N X I E T Y. You know the words come inside your thing. No, no. The word anxiety walks into a tiger and is chasing you. So you picked up something from the day, or officially from the, from the world, and you're sleeping on So when you sleep, it should be collapsed sleep. So when tomorrow, when does tomorrow begin in Manila? What time do you begin tomorrow? Uh, no, what time? Tomorrow begins at what time? Five o'clock. Five, 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 so your tomorrow is beginning tonight at 10 o'clock when you sleep. The quality of your sleep determines tomorrow. It's a very important point. Because if you want six hours of sleep, you must invest in that sleep. And you must invest in a good sleep for you to have a good tomorrow. So when you sleep, you should wash your legs properly. See? And then you sleep, switching off your computer. This is how you switch off the computer. Whichever religion that you are praying to, whichever God, whoever you are praying to, you thank him for that whole day. Oh, wonderful things that has happened. Hopefully, tomorrow will be a very wonderful day. Well, mind, one, be, two, one. Last sister, she said that she will be up at 6 o'clock. And I already put my handphone at 6. But sharp 540. So you have 
It is not the length of sleep, it is the depth of sleep. A lot of people get up at 9 o'clock and feel very tired, you know why? Because that's all your excessive sleep. You can never get, if you oversleep, you will be tired. And the whole day will be gone. You must get up. There are young children, people I don't know, the youth are sleeping. What time? 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Ah, the mother will say, Darling, you woke up so early. What are you doing? 10 o'clock morning, you come. <laughs> the blind man. <laughs> I say, that's why the morning vibrations are very powerful. Especially for those who are studying, for this, a very powerful time. Creative people will be like that. They will tap. If you want to be creative, you want to be multi-millionaire, if you want to succeed in life, you must invest in this type of simple simple Sleep. Don't allow worry to come inside and disturb. Oh, it's got a worry, okay. Let me be there. Okay, let me I sit in many, many national committees. I have got 10 PhD students, a uh, lot of committees and everything I do. I do the NGOs, I do so many things. But I don't allow anything to disturb what is entitled to me. You mean to say, if I'm supposed to sleep, I don't sleep. If I'm supposed to eat, I eat. I want to. Then when I'm devoting my time to any individual, I give my 100% of my time to that individual. I don't allow other things to disturb. My thing. And then sometimes I'll tell her, let's go for a movie. I go with her with a movie. What do I do? 100% I will see. No one. Actually, if most movies come case, I wanted to see. So how I'm very interested in all the direction and all. So I like, you enjoy the thing. I sit down. I will. I will be so. And drag every problem everywhere and not be able to solve any problem. <laughs> you drag everything. And you discuss the problem. The worst thing that you can ever do is to discuss your problem and not have any solution and discuss it for the purposes of discussing. You know, a lot of people discuss issues not to solve any problem, just to vent out. So, and especially if you've got a daughter-in-law, you will definitely complain to another mother who's got another daughter-in-law. So both daughter-in-laws are compared. Okay, anyway, let's keep the phone down. Anyway, they said never to talk in behind people's back. <laughs> After one hour of condemning and criticizing and tearing up, you put the phone down. <laughs> they never may not talk ill of other people. So, restlessness, irritability, and here, depression. depression. One in five. One in, when I say it's one in five, here the depression levels are going up. Just now, only brother showed me the handphone. Your country here is having 500 teenage pregnancies a day. Malaysia is 50. Thailand, 356. He showed me I was stunned. 500 teenage pregnancies a day. The website in Manila. Can you imagine in one year? Oh, I've got a number of people. So, you're going to get a huge wave of people who are going to be more and more depressed. Because then, you no, know, <laughs> I can even can you imagine the teenage pregnancy. A mother, a teen mother comes, a teen mother comes to the mother. Mama, I want to tell you something. Yeah. You remember you told me to become productive? I became, I became reproductive. So, <laughs> 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 so, so, now it becomes like that. Do you think the mother and father is going to be there for graduations? You know, I always want to be like that. So, one, two, three step, there will be a lot of pain, pressure, they will be pressuring the child. For the rest of the thing, they will be Do you know how much cortisol is being secreted into the child? Because the mother is tensed up, and as a result of the high cortisol level, you can increase your autism level, attention deficits, so those can come out. The child is literally gone in the sense that his brain power is much reduced. So he's hoping. Then he come back struggling in life, struggling. Then he comes to a teenager life. Okay, no love at home, no love anywhere. There will be some rascal outside there. Who will come? Oh. I love you. Do you love me? Yeah. Can you show me how much you love? That's it. In one room, and then again the cycle repeats. Cycle repeats. Five hundred becomes seven hundred fifty because they're all looking for love. See, so depression levels become there. Insecurity, loss of libido is limit your imagination, impact, memory, concentration, excessive smoking, all these are causes of stress. Okay, next one. See, book said that the, see the book, the book, title of the book is Art of Sharing. <laughs> and all three are fighting. <laughs> so, this is a very big thing, sharing. Next one. First, I was dying to finish high school and start college and then I was dying to finish college and start working and then I was dying to marry and have children and then I was dying for my children to grow old enough for school so I would return to work and then I was dying to retire and now I am dying and suddenly I realize I forgot to leave. 
Ah, sí. <risa> Dice, sé como vos. La vida. Sí, wow. Somebody's coming. So right in there. Jump, bring them. Go watch it. <laughs> so people are living today in a selfish world. For myself, myself, I, I am, I am. Okay, this is another two words that causes stress a lot. What is that? I am. I becomes bigger, my becomes bigger. These two things become bigger, you are always suffering. Miss my, 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 my. Oh, I, 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 I. Okay, until at this point. Oh yeah, just finish this one. Don't worry, darling, everything is great. The turkey is in the microwave and I am feeding the baby. So, where's the baby? So, until now, anyone has got any questions to ask? No, is this benefiting you? So, okay, any questions? Actually, this is the reason why when doctors visit patients and come back, they feel very exhausted. Doctors don't know that this is what actually happens. They feel it's actually going around. But you tell me, you know, do anything. You go and, hey, how are you? Look at things, you'll be okay, huh? And you just go around. How exhausting can you be? But when you come back home, they feel very exhausted. The real reason is when you sit across people who are highly stressed up or this and you're counseling them, yeah, they will be exhausted. Which is why you have to protect. There's a process, and you need to do some. There's a process in you. Whenever you interact with anyone, there's a process by which you protect yourself so that you do not get involved or engaged in it to the point where it depletes you. But it's good, you need to know about it. And then after that, when you leave, you lose okay. People have forgotten how to find joy. So this is why when you live in this stress free world, you find you can go deeper and deeper. Then you find that everything becomes a great joy. Everything is a joy to you. And you will not look for why do you why you think they go to the display? Why? Because there, you dancing, I'm there, I'm magic later on. <laughs> so so when you do all these things and then it's excitement, but very temporary and very transitory. And that environment has got the capacity and the ability to cause influence in many ways. Your walls of restraint will go down. That's why you didn't think that you would drink, but when you went there, everybody will. So, slowly, slowly, the walls will go down. It's influence. So, it is very important to make sure that you discover a joy inside. So, creative people, that means happy people are creative people. So, you must divert people towards experiencing more and more creativity in everything that they do. So, whenever someone is bored and someone is dull, you must make sure that you push people towards discovering creativity. Even in marriage, you can come to a point where they cannot find excitement anymore. So they, what they do is they look for excitement in other people. <laughs> so this is where the problem comes in. Can you understand? So actually, it is not necessary that you should see. If I ask this question to someone, one lady was passing by, this fellow is married. Then, oh, look at her. So I said, hey, I want to ask you, we are married, right? Now how you can look at the girl like that? Professor, the hunt is better than the kill. <laughs> it's philosophy, right? So for him to hunt her and go for it is thrilling. So actually it's not him or her, it's a thrill. So what are you looking for? You're looking for this end of it. Actually in life, you're only looking for this end of it more. That's all. When you get a gush of that, you know. So okay, why is it that most of us are involved in social work? It's because the social work gives us the end of it. When helping other people, helping people, helping serving people. It's end of, like look, today we've organized this talk. Uh, and this talk is totally free of charge to you. And everything. So why what what is the benefit to us? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. If every one of you go back and practice something of this nature, you become happy. You become happy. What does it matter to me? You are it's totally given and you know, this is all you know, maybe is a is a certain 
DMT cells are process cleaning, they are studying brain disease. That is a huge big businessman. But, <laughs> so, but he, he, every, he, two days he's here, everybody has sacrificed their lives in being here. If only one reason, just the joy of it, just the thrill of it, it's an endorphin. So when you come back, hey brother, come back three weeks, yeah, we may come not for anything else because it's, it's a thrill. We, we enjoy this endorphin. <laughs> so this is what we should be looking for. To look for a thrill in life and give your life towards it. Look for an ideal, self the ideal. You'll become distressed, no problem. So one of the de-stressing factors really is, is about service. It's about service. That means if you are always up, in Finland they did a study, they showed people who are selfishly living dies three times faster than the selfless people. You die earlier, selfish people living. The cells doesn't understand. Cells know why you should live no less, might as well keep living. The cells will collect. But if you find that you start living for other people, living for a higher cause, the whole body starts to regenerate. You feel very young all the time. So service has this ability to produce endorphins in a very high manner and you find that that will control your immune status and give you higher health. So just nothing, just come out and go to somewhere and help people. And then when you come out, you ask your person, why did you go and do that? Any help? Did you get any money? No, why did you do it? Just joy. Suddenly you are orientated towards unconditional living, which is a living style. When you get orientated to living unconditionally, your cell starts to blossom. Everything starts to heal. Your healing will start taking place. In selfless service, healing takes place. So everything becomes fantastic. I would ask this then to just talk about your service. Connecting with what you've told us is plant the seeds of love in our hearts and let them grow into trees of service and shower the sweet fruit of bliss and share the bliss with all. Shri Sandesai Organization Philippines has classified its service activities into five headings Feeding, Medical, the Young Adults Talent Development Program, and Education in Human Values, and the Faculty Development Program. I will explain each service so that you can easily make a choice between these five as to where you would be best suited to volunteer your time and talent. At the end of this session, you will notice there's a kiosk behind where our volunteers will gladly assist you should you wish to sign up for any service mission. The feeding service is also known as Narayan Seva and it takes place on the 19th of every month. Needy communities are identified and served with either cooked food or bags containing the essential groceries. At times, we visit the homes of these people and we also spend time listening to their struggles and hardships and the appalling conditions that they live in. Sometimes they have no water at all on a daily basis. Yet, there is a smile on their faces as they gratefully accept the food from us. One free meal does not suffice. But the joy on these recipients' faces leaves the donor in bliss. It immediately connects us to the thoughts of unity of mankind, for service is its own reward. Next is the medical mission, that is extending dental, optical and general health care to chosen communities. Doctors from well-known hospitals in Manila treat about 250 kids every month with medical and dental care and about 75 adults with optical care. Free medications, vitamins, eyeglasses are provided at these camps. Volunteers need not have a healthcare experience and could help with registration of patients, educating patients on health and hygiene, and thus extending mutual help and selfless service. Let us help the helpless, sick and the needy and handle them with a rare flower or a costly fruit. The third service category is education in human values. Come and teach the core values of love, peace, truth, right conduct and non-violence to the children of Sri Satisai School Pilia. This is a model school which provides free education to the children.
children of India. We hold these values education classes every Wednesday and we spend time with kids through stories, activities, quotations, music and silent sitting. The fourth activity is the young adults talent development. The fourth activity is the young adults talent development. This consists of a series of monthly online workshops that help our young adults hone their skills for a happy and successful personal and professional life. This caters to the age group of 18 to 40 years. The fifth service activity is faculty development program. Please come and join us in enhancing further the capabilities of the teachers of Shri Sathisai School, Pililia. Our Pililia School has about 120 kids from kindergarten to grade 6 and 7 teachers overseen by a full-time principal. All these teachers are trained with academic guidance and faculty development. The aim is to positively influence the practice and skill sets of our teachers to improve the overall learning experience of the students. Thus, utilizing your precious time over faculty development will go a long way and create a huge impact on education. We look forward to seeing you all at at least one of your chosen service activity and please share your experience afterwards.